This is not a GPS. And neither is this one. Even when I find my location very precisely. Or get extremely precise data. And I'm not just being nerdy and picky, I am being, though I'm being semantic. This is also not a GPS. What they are, however, are GPS receivers. GPS itself is a system of satellites, 28 of them actually, including four spares, orbiting 22,200 miles above the Earth, ground stations which control the satellites and do other things that we mostly don't care about, and, of course, the receivers, the end user units, on boats, on airplanes, and on handheld devices like this. The system is operated and installed by the USAF in 1995. The satellites send microwave signals with ridiculously precise timing schemes and some other information down to your receiver. It's a radio system. It gets picked up by the big antenna, which could, of course, be inside, say, a mobile phone. The receivers are pure receivers. They're not transceivers. They don't send any information, so they are purely passive navigational devices which can be useful in some case, tactical purposes. Now, because the Earth is round, you can only see a few of them at a time. Much like this case. It uses a complex version, three-dimensional version of triangulation to get the position, but since it can't see all the satellites at once, it has to do other interesting things. Now, a good GPS will let you actually see the satellites it's currently using. They pretty much all use the same scheme, which is a standard way of depicting satellites in orbit. This circle around the edge, sorry for the glare and the noise of the bugs and so forth, this circle around the edge is the horizon line. This circle is 45 degrees elevation, so from the horizon pointing up 45, and this dot or X sometimes in the center is straight up. There's locations around the edges. You see north, so you'll want to loc you can orient the device then and figure out where there's interference and stuff. For example, here, that's oriented correctly to our current location. And you can see that we're only picking up satellites over in this sector because that way is a building. We're on a counter up against my house. And therefore, you can't see the satellites that are over here. You especially can't see the satellites, of course, right on the horizon sometimes. And you can derive some other information from this. The information at the bottom along here is the degree of lock you have on each of the satellites and the numbers if we look very closely, I'll go ahead and zoom in so you can see what I'm talking about now. The numbers here are which satellite? They're each numbered. Um, the number, I actually don't know what the numbering scheme means. I believe it's, I would guess it's sequential and there are not 51 satellites, it's just satellite 51 since some of them get shot, fall out of the sky eventually or something. But we have a lock on satellite 2, 4, 12, 48, and 51 right now. And you can see the positions of each of these up here on the screen as well. GPS is a navigational aid, but it also does a couple of other things. It is certainly good at indicating your location on or above the Earth. By above, we mean within reasonable range, like flying in an aircraft above it. It tells time very precisely and accurately. Uh, that is, in fact, key to its operation, so it's something you can trust implicitly about any GPS receiver. If it tells you the time, then it's not, then it's absolutely true. Though it doesn't necessarily account for time zones and such, depends on the software of your device, but to the second you know what time it is. 
they can calculate speed, direction, and altitude. Actually, the altitude, sorry, is uh, also derived from your exact location. But speed and direction are calculated. But since you know the time very, very precisely, then any remotely modern unit with multiple receivers that's calculating live can do this. They are pretty to ridiculously accurate. Um, anything you can pick up down to your everyday mobile phone is going to give you a few feet of accuracy at the um, at its best time. And pretty much everything now also has other features. So the home screen on mine here is your kind of basic wind launched service for what the GPS did. They gave you the location in whatever coordinate system you wanted and some other things like accuracy and the time. But they also have the ability to load maps onto them and you can set waypoints. Which store location, their location, altitude, and other information about it pretty much forever so that you can navigate. point to point as you would when you're using normal ma normal uh, paper maps. More importantly, GPSs are not a bunch of other things. They are not inherently, at least, a compass. Now, some of them do have a compass built in, but a compass is not a compass. This, for example, has a difficult to see, but it's there, compass built into it. There are uh, handheld G dedicated GPS units that have them also. You can see this, it turns. Now, they are electronic, and like a lot of electronic things, have their own pros and cons, though they have the other neat feature of being able to um, display in any number of methods. They also need to be calibrated and you can't necessarily see certain other problems going on with them, like they don't work at tilt just like a regular compass does, but you can't see the needle dragging on the device. GPSs are not also not always accurate or available. Certain conditions can degrade accuracy or cause us a total loss of signal. Now, obviously, as we just discussed, being indoors or next to or underneath a structure, they can't. They are microwave band, so they cannot go through walls or even um, trees, mountains, so forth. Space weather. There is such a thing as space weather. Um, there are solar flares and even before that there's other kinds of solar act of solar and otherwise space activity that can of course degrade any radio signal, but especially radio signals coming from far up into space. Sandstorms. A key place you might want a GPS is in the middle of the desert when there's no visibility. But sandstorms and certain other kinds of storms cause static electricity all about the area and therefore you can't get radio signals clearly through them. Geometric dilution of position is one of the more complicated ones. Sorry, I pressed the wrong buttons. I put the GPS unfortunately in a place that couldn't see anything, but this will still work for our purposes because we can see a map of where they all are located. Because it's a triangu triangulation-based system, the system has to calculate the, your position based on the angles between all these satellites. As shown over here. Your receiver could be on the ground or in the air, but the GPS, it has to calculate this angle in three-dimensional space. However, as you might know from geometry class back in school, or just figure out yourself, you get a piece of paper, it's much harder to calculate precise angles with very closely spaced satellites. So here, we'd prefer to get, say, that satellite, and that satellite, and that satellite, and that satellite. Reasonably widely dispersed ones. But since they're all orbiting, and you move around, you may come up with a time where the only visible satellites are in a small cluster in the top of the sky. Uh, there is a specific phenomenon, which I don't understand about orbital mechanics, that means you won't get clusters at the edge. You tend to get them kind of in the middle of the sky, uh, so I've been told. 